everybody. Uh, I am your game master, Daniel Fox, and today we are going to play a special scenario, well, a special very close to my heart, uh, called Chateau, and not Chateau like the milk for those who live in Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> it's Chateau, uh, this really cool uh, one-shot adventure uh, that I've designed for our organized play program or Zweihander RPG. Um, and we're doing a interesting, we're gonna, we're gonna play with a very small group tonight. We're gonna play just three people. Um, so uh, I think it'd probably be a good time to maybe introduce both ourselves and just say say, your, say who your, what your first name is, what the care, and then read your first five lines of your character. Okay. So we'll start first with Nick. Hi, my name is Nick. And tonight I am playing a I am playing Ulf, a young human male highwayman. He is five foot nine inches, one hundred eighty pounds, and of a normal build. He has pale skin, with ginger hair and hazel eyes. Ulf has three distinguishing marks: branded with a cattle iron, different colored eyes, strong jaw. Uh, he was born in spring, is of the aristocrat social class, and of a forgotten upbringing. Oh, interesting. Ulf's dooming is do not accept trust lightly, and his drawback is cursed. What's your drawback? What's it, what's it mean? Uh, whenever you intend to sacrifice a fortune point, roll a d6 chaos die. If the result is a phase six, you must use two fortune points instead of one. So, Nick, you're going to be Ulf the Highwayman. Mm hmm. An interesting background. It'll be fun to play. So let's go next to Kay. Hi, I'm Kay. Uh, I'll be playing Bartlesby Lutrius. He's Bartlesby? A, Bartlesby. He's an adult human male pugilist. Uh, he's 253 pounds and he's six foot two. Of a husky build. He has light skin with dark brown hair and dark brown eyes. Uh, Bartlesby has three distinguishing marks. Curly locks of hair, an embarrassing tattoo on his face, and a pronounced brow. He was born in summer and is of the low-born social class and is a, uh, of a forgotten upbringing as well. Uh, Bartlesby Dooming is the unlit path is the most dangerous and his drawback is bad ticker, which is whenever you fail to resist against stress, fear, or terror, you gain an additional three corruption. <laughs> nice. Bartlesby. Bartlesby, the pugilist! Yes. So that brings us finally to Adam. Adam, tell us about your character. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Adam. My character's name is Partha Ralvar. Partha Ralvar is an adult human female bounty hunter. She is 5'11", 180 pounds, and of a husky build. Partha has freckled fair skin with curly black hair and blue eyes. Partha has three distinguishing marks, abnormally white teeth, burn scars on her face and arms, and dimpled cheeks. She she was born in autumn, is of the aristocrat social class, and of an industrious upbringing. Partha's dooming is the shadows stalk hungrily, and her drawback is split face. Uh, split face is when you, uh, is that you must flip the results to fail all skill tests which rely on smell and taste. Fun one. She's been through some stuff. Been through some stuff. It's good. So, um... I think we're probably just going to jump right in. This is, a, like I mentioned before, this is this is new to most everyone around the table. It's a, it's a short scenario. can be played usually in one night, about four hours. We've seen it played in three hours. We've seen it played in eight hours. Um, I have a feeling with this small group, it will probably be played in one game session, which is good. Um, so with that, let's jump right into Chateau. Should we roll initiative? No. On a cold winter morning, just a few days outside of Chandery, you unload from a prison wagon, fitted with manacles. The horses that drew the wagon here whinny, bracing against the cold wind. You are freed by a warden, a former prisoner turned sergeant named Hardin. As the key turns and the shackles slink to the ground, your mind turns back to two days ago the dead of winter, you were scraped from the jail cells of Baron Harper Clavager. 
Having been in prison for a number of petty crimes, you have been given a chance to earn your freedom by taking upon a very dangerous mission. You were led through a hall teeming with soldiers of all stripe, as nearly 200 cavalry have gathered, ready to deploy north to the Dunish lands of Barra March. So this probably sounds familiar to some of you around the table, some of these characters and places. So brought before the Baron, he spoke of Chateau Kilden, how the outpost was lost to the Dunish some time ago and has not been inhabited until three years ago. He goes on to say that a renegade lord named Chauncey Redding took up residence in Chateau Kilden. The Baron speaks of a war in the north, and that Lord Chauncey failed to report back to see his, to his noble duty. The Baron ordered Lord Chauncey to vacate the chateau, but was met with a poorly written letter, responding in no less than a few words calling the, for the Baron to go plow himself. It sounds like a very Chauncey ish ready. Chauncey, but coincidentally, for those who are watching, uh, is a former player character, as is Baron Robert Clavager. Anyhow. The Baron wants Lord Chauncey in chains and to be brought before a military tribunal in the capital for discipline. He hands you a military writ, an issue for arrest. Who will take the writ? I'll take it. All right. Uh, all few are given this this arrest warrant. The Baron tells you to produce it before a man named Ulysses Coventry, the right-hand man to Lord Chauncey, so that Ulysses can carry out the arrest. Should Lord Chauncey, though Lord Chauncey is corrupt, Ulysses is very loyal and will pose no threat to you. Once Lord Chauncey is returned alive, your criminal records will be erased. And with that, you're ushered from his court. Walking with the Baron in chains still, you walk alongside him toward the stables, away from his coterie of cavalrymen and other attendants. Mounting a storm horse, just outside the court's prying ears, Baron Clavager issues this final edict. Ignore the warrant. Once captured, you are to terminate Lord Chauncey's command of Chateau Kilden on the road back to Chandray. Should Ulysses stand in your way, ensure that he does not make it back alive. The rattling of your chains clatter into the snow. As the manacles drop, your warden, Hardin, turns the keys. You are behind this very large prison wagon, standing in a place simply called the Narrow Pass. It is not snowbound yet, but snow certainly dusts the stony plinth of gray rocks jutting toward the sky, where already the atmosphere of the winter is getting lower and lower. It is daytime, but the sun is difficult to spot. It's somewhere beyond the clouds. The air is damp with the pending of snowstorm. Scree and rubble tumbles here and there. An aging old coachman named Ernst shivers as he's holding on to the leashes of the horses. The intention is that Hardin will accompany you to Chateau Kilden, but he does not know the true way. He unfetters a series of mules that you will be taking, and he lays out a large lambskin map. This is the map of the surrounding area, Hardin says. He points. We're here in the narrow pass. I figure maybe half a day or so, and then we'll get to the Vale of Loeg. At the Vale of Loeg is where we'll find Chateau Kilden. Not far, I think. <clears throat> okay. So... I think we just up and leave. Nothing, nothing for it. I mean, can we, can we get out of our shackles? He nods and will clink. He will release your manacles into the snow as they clatter on the ground. Uh, didn't feel right before. Well, I say we go off, chaps. Yes. Certainly. See if we've got a job to do. Ernst has given us enough foodstuffs to make it there. Once we reach the chateau, we'll probably be able we'll be able to break our fast. And if not there, certainly in the village in the, in the Vale. Well, then there's nothing for it. Let's go. So, he says, who wants to walk with me along this path? Well, I've never I mean, shared a path before. Aren't we all walking along the path? 
Someone's gonna take this map and keep keep us aligned. Who among you are going to do it? <laughs> no one said I had directions. <laughs> you expect you to simply walk there and march away with Lord Chauncey? Fine, then I'll go. I'll do it. Good, Good man. He nods, and he will hand you the lambskin map. All right. Who's going to take the mules with the food? I can do that. I know a thing of you about beasts of burden. Good old Bartlesby, what am I going to do? Well, it looks like <laughs> you're going to be the one to scout ahead. Oh, well, yeah. Let, let's go. So as you prepare yourselves, and Ernst is still waiting as you kind of attend to your own trappings, you're now equipped with everything you came with, all of your things, take a quick account of your trappings, if you would, as well as your weapons and armor if you have any. You just get that second sheet there. Oh, I do. You begin filtering through the things that you have also, be sure to choose but one talent on the second sheet. I put a check mark beside it. Is that all, me lords? Ernst says. You can hear his te wooden teeth practically chattering from here. Well, Harden asks. Ulf consults the map. It appears like it's this way. I reckon. Let's do it. Go on, Ernst. We'll catch back up at Chandering. Godspeed! Ernst says as the wagon clatters and rumbles as it kind of goes away down the narrow pass into deeper into the mountains until it disappears beyond a gale of, of wind and atmosphere. You lose black rocks. It is now just the three of you and your warden named Harden, a man who was dressed head to toe and looking more like a cauldron than anything. A beaten, old, broken, battered black plate mail and a very thick, uh, very thick uh, mantle over his shoulders. I guess I've seen that old man way, way away from here. It's like, every time I take a coach, he's on it. It's strange. Many lowborn have homely faces. It's, it's easy to not to, to get them mixed up, I, re I suppose. <laughs> you know, of that we agree. <laughs> Mike, uh, Yeah, lowborn. Yes. Uh, well then, I suppose I should uh, go forward and uh, see what's ahead. That's what my job was, yeah? That's right. Yeah. He nods, smiling. Uh, point me in a direction. He looks to you. Well, consults the map again. Roll an easy navigation test. Okay. Uh, if you would, hold. All right. So my navigation is 40, but untrained, so it's flipped and failed. And I rolled a 42. <laughs> Which is? Um, so that uh, with an easy, that is... A routine. A routine, okay. So that is a success. Okay, yeah. He points you in one direction. Then if I go, call back if there's any trouble. So you see that Bartlesby heads along. Go ahead and make a routine stealth test. Bartlesby. Okay, so my stealth is a 45. I rolled a 51, so uh, that succeeds with routine. Nice. That's good. And finally, attending to the supplies and the mules as well is uh, Partha. Uh, Partha, please make a routine survival test. Okay, routine survival will make it uh, 16. We got an 88. Oh, a critical <laughs> failure! Way to start it off. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so... 
here's here's what ends up happening. So you issue the direction to go, and that's the direction that you go. But along the way, like you're kind of leaving things in your wake, as you realize, and you have to stop every once in a while to attend back to the supplies. Um, in fact, uh, who here has torches or oil pots on their character sheet? I have a lantern and an oil pot. Yeah. Three torches. You mean who did? No, no. Okay. Uh, what do you have on your sheet? Uh, I've got torches. How many? Uh, three. Okay. You lose one. I have three. You lose two. An and oil pot and a lantern. And you lose an oil pot. Somewhere along the way, as you're heading out, you feel... The good thing is, all the, judging by the map, you feel that you're going to arrive at Chateau Kildon by nightfall, without a doubt. Um, although the atmosphere continues to descend as you ascend the narrow pass higher and higher up as this plinth of rock stretch toward the steel gray sky, um, you feel confident you'll reach the Vale of Loeg, at least, by nightfall. At the rate that you're moving. And fortunately, uh, as you know, as you seemingly know the way well enough, Bartlesby, as you consult with Ulf, you yes. are kind of you're some number of yards ahead, and every once in a while you lose sight of them around a switchback or so. But you're kind of ahead, watching. Sometimes you'll crawl up amid the rock to kind of on an outcropping to wait for them to pass to ensure that the path before you, and behind you, and beside you is safe. But, as you continue to ascend the narrow pass into the mountains, it does grow chillier and chillier. Uh, I need you all to make your routine toughness test to withstand the rigors of the cold. 50% chance to succeed. I rolled a 10, success. 60 on toughness, and I got a 47. At least it was a, a normal failure. So, did you fail as well, Bartlesby? No, I succeeded. Okay. Well, maybe it's just because Barth is a little bit lackadaisical or trailing behind all of you, uh, but <laughs> she grows a little cold, a little chilly, a little frigid. Maybe you drop a glove. <laughs> you probably failed your test. <laughs> and you suffered nine physical peril. Oh, no. Ow. The air becomes bitterly cold this high up, and as you ascend... The world behind you seems to disappear behind you in a cold, wintry mist. At some point or another, about a few hours out, you all turn around a wickedly sharp corner, and you come up on a very gruesome-looking sight. Clearly, you are not the first expedition to pass through here. You can see there are a set of horses that have been slaughtered, riddled with arrows, and shredded to pieces. Blood and gore spread across the snowy landscape almost like a pink slush. At this point, I need our scout to roll 2d6 chaos type. He lands on the phase 6. 2d6. We'll see. It's a 1 and a 1. Nice. Well, nothing seems to be lurking around here, that's for sure. But the snow is pink and wet with blood. Can we tell what? Killed this expedition. Well, you begin to approach, and you you begin to realize as you're getting, you can see the horses are literally feathered with black arrows. Mm. Go ahead and make a a, uh, a a heal test if you would. This test will be trivial. Okay. For you, Wolf. All right. So that is a seventy percent chance to succeed. Look to fail. And I rolled an eighty, so that's a failure. Well, surely they were all struck by arrows, but a curious thing, there are no people among them. Everyone's been taken. Except the horses, I suppose, but, uh... Oh, maybe... Maybe they're on? Oh, uh... Look and see if there's any, um... Any footprints going towards the chateau to see if, uh... Perhaps there were survivors? Okay. Let me get a survival test. This will be secret. I got a secret. I got a secret. Okay, standard it would be 50, and I rolled a 64. Don't keep that. Yep. Well, you can see all kinds of footfalls, foot boot prints all around here, intermingled, intermingled with your own. In fact, the, the sight of these horses left to slaughter 
their bellies have been exposed to the air. Um, and something's been gnawing on them, but whatever they were, they have seemed to have slinked off and immediately the uh, part that you find paw prints all over. They seem to go both in and out of the rock. Wolves have been through here. Even though I've never seen a wolf use a bow and arrow, they've been here. And uh, perhaps they were the ones that were doing this to the horses after. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll be on the lookout for wolves going in, but uh, haven't heard any howling and I suppose we're safe. Howling of the wind, that's about it. Hardin says. Uh, I don't know if they're, they're out at night more than the daytime, but uh, I suggest we keep moving. Could this have, uh, could this have been a merchant group or soldiers? What, what, what do we think we passed through here? Hardin smiles. It's been several months since Lord Chauncey has made trade with the Baron. There were there was another expedition sent before us, though. How long ago was that? A few weeks. He, he admits. Were they they given the same deal as we were? Uh, Sir Matthew was to negotiate Lord Chauncey. We didn't hear back. We assume the worst. Lord Chauncey is a man who is uh, unpredictable. Dangerous man. How do you feel about approaching him? Well, I don't think that Sir Matthew Thornton had the uh, had the king's writ of an arrest warrant signed by the king himself. I don't think he had that in hand. Unfortunately, I think it sounds like that Matthew Thornton didn't make it. Well, what, think, what makes you think a king's written would have any damn, damn difference? Chan- Chauncey, is, 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 he's the type to say, to go plow yourself, I mean, a piece of paper wouldn't be much of use to him, as far as I could tell. Well, Chauncey's a dangerous man, but he's not a murderer. And maybe that writ that you've got would be enough to, I don't know, make all of his guards think twice about Going against the Baron. Could be. Let's hope so. I'm hoping that that keeps us from getting taken out by guards. <laughs> well, I think we best look out for the range, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, well, let's continue. Nothing can be done here. Unless uh, any of you would like to stay next to the horses. Oh, you know. Maybe the pillagers. Uh, I just want to see if any things were taken to see if they were assigned to pillagers. Well, you root around and they, they didn't take any of the bitten bridles. They didn't take the saddles. They didn't take any of the tack from the horses. Um, but clearly the sacks have been emptied uh, as their foodstuffs are gone. You don't, they, you find some sundries, some regular sundries, like a trowel or two to dig a hole, maybe a striker. But their food is certainly missing, and without a doubt, Sir Matthew Thornton and another expedition would bring food with them, so the food has been taken. Any kind of oil pots or torches or anything to replace iron locks? They do not. It appears those have been taken. However, scrounging around, you do find something of somewhat value. In fact, it's on Sir Matthew Thornton's horse. There's uh, gunpowder and shot. There's three gunpowder and shot. And not far from there, you can you find a uh, blunderbuss. Hmm. The blunderbuss's <clears throat> muzzle is still warm. Oh. I think this was used recently. Well, well, you have to put your hand on it. Well, uh, would we have heard this? I think we weren't that far. No, if we'd have heard it, I wouldn't ask you to put your hand on it because you might burn it. No, just feel it. Yes, it feels warm. Yes. Yes. It's not smoldering, but it is certainly warm. But, uh, I mean, I, I haven't shot one of these, but I've heard they're quite loud. That's all I was saying. I, uh, look over the two of you, and I'm just looking and seeing what armaments you're carrying. I'm carrying a blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> and a rapier. Suit of leather armor and a spear. Fireheart and spear. Oh. May as well take this shot and powder. 
Yeah, I... I'll... I'll keep this. And if we get in trouble, I'll use it and drop it. But, uh... Yeah, you can take the shot. Here, let me load it up for you. I load up. Okay. I load up his one shot so he can, he can have it later. Sure. The it's slow fuse is not lit at this point. Point. She, uh... She looks at you and she says, Oh, thank you for help for helping me. I feel so helpless when it comes to these things. You're welcome, lady. Tally forth, yes. I did what I've been thinking. Yeah. She uh, she she takes her arborless crossbow and puts it over her shoulder and carries the blunderbuss. So you all kind of reconvene, and not too long after the slaughter, you find your way reaching a series of very steep cliffs that open up into the Vale of Loag. Clearly, it is the Vale. Uh, the sun has almost set at this point, and standing on the cliff from here, you have a whole view of the entire valley before you, and as you kind of come along the road, you can feel the, the wind kind of pressing against you, tugging your clothes and cloaks. The air is growing wet as these large, fat snowflakes start to fall as the sun has set, and you can, but you can still see bits and pieces of the valley. The valley stretches out, and you can see a low cobbled road, half covered in snow, and a very dangerous series of switchbacks descending down into the valley. And below, you can see a smattering of farmsteads, small stone buildings that all seem to surround this uh, smooth mirror of a lake. But looming above it, almost like some gargoyle comprised of stone and shadow. Is Chateau Kilden, almost threatening to fall over into the lake, some number of hundred yards above. As of almost this valley was literally a cleave made between the mountains, where on the other side would be Chateau Kilden on a road that leads up to it. It must be a mile or two out from here, but a, va but a valley and a village stretches before you. Well, it seems we've found our destination. Shall we? I should like to spend some time in an inn with maybe a wool mail before we have to go and do some dirty work tomorrow. That sounds fair enough to me. Well, I shan't turn that down now. Too, too many months in, in a prison cell is, is giving my, making my backside quite sore. Mm. Yes, I require a strict regiment of uh, at least one mail per day, and it's been months. I suppose you've got some catch-up to play, then, mm -hmm. <laughs> lady. Uh, yes, uh, away to an A. I'm sure there's an end here, yes. Harden looks down at the crumbling at the road that kind of twists its way down from the cliffs. Uh, it doesn't look safe, he says. Not all roads are safe. What can you do about it? I'll well, be getting on this damn mule, that's for sure, he says as he begins to loosen the packs and kind of situates all of the foodstuffs and such on one of the mules. Oh. There's a mule for each of you if you wish to take it by mule. Or you can go down the, you can go down by foot if you like. It's entirely up to you. Which seems to be the quicker way down. It's not a matter of speed, because it is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's okay. a matter of safety. Alright, I'll, I'll I trust my feet a little bit more. Yeah. If you're gonna I walk, can certainly it, use the animal support. If you're going to walk and take the reins of the mule, you're leading this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bartle will do the same. No, but what about yep. yourself, Wolf? Or sorry, yourself, Martha? Uh, she will She will be a follower in this case. She will uh, uh, walk the mule. Okay, so Partha's mule has all of the foodstuffs. Who's got the light? I got a lantern. No oil. No oil. I've got a torch. Torch will burn pretty bright for about an hour. You okay. know that. You strike it, and then within the within the pale light, where the darkness is is struggling to be is being 
brushed away by the by the being pushed away by the flickering of the torch in hand, which means you'll be leading the way down the path. Um, but on the same token, you see these big, fat, wet snowflakes slowly falling. You begin going down the path. So who, who's you're all on foot. Yep. All you need to make challenging coordination tests. <laughs> this is fail forward. <laughs> 35. 35. No chance to succeed. 35. <laughs> is it challenging? What'd you get, Bartlesby? 45. I got it on the nose. Okay. What about yourself, Ulf? <laughs> I got 58, which is a failure. Ugh. Oh no! <laughs> Standard though, so I'm okay. 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 I thought you said crit failure. So, I was like, again? I'm not <laughs> not again. I'm just, I'm happy if I. We're you know. rolling double. <laughs> That's right. So you begin to head down the path, um, and Ulf is the first to slip. And as he slips and falls to the ground, the torch goes plunk, tank. Somewhere far down below, as the light is snuffed out instantly in an embankment of snow about 50, 60 feet down. And you realize how precarious this path is, even on foot. You pick yourself back up, dusting yourself off. And then you are preceded uh, by Bartlesby, who's, who seems to have at least a, a, a good footing beneath him. <laughs> That's our case character. Uh, you're feeling pretty good overall, um, but uh, other than that, um, you were f the l not last but not least is is Partha, and Partha begins to stumble for a moment, and you can hear the mule kind of bray, and he catches himself, or she catches herself on the side of the rock, and the mule goes teetering down until there's this vicious snapping of its neck. And suddenly, all your supplies are displayed down in the darkness. There's barely any light to see by. You must strike another torch, or another light, for that matter. Anyone got another torch? Damn it! Do I, or was it on? <laughs> Hold on. Do you think it's up? Do you think it was on the mule? I don't think she's walking around just carrying an, an unlit torch. Do you have a backpack? I. Uh, Yes. Okay. So, so, rocks. I, 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 it could have been in the backpack, maybe. Roll D6 cast yeah, out. Find out. If it's uh, three to six, it was, in, it was on the mule. Two. Oh, fortunately, <laughs> you do have a torch, and you do have your pack, and you light, you light the, uh, you light the, uh, the torch. The mucus in your nose begins to freeze as you kind of come down this winding cobbled road, and. You begin to enter. As you, you you get to the foot. Sorry, you get to the foot of the of the path, the bottom of the cliffs. And by this time, Chateau Kilden upon a high cliff kind of looms like a large shadow. And then the sun is all gone. Sunset has passed, and it's now nighttime. You have uh, only Partha's torch to see by at this point. All right. Uh. Yeah. That was all of our food, Parted says. Do you think we can go down there and get it? You're to climb down their crevasse? That's dangerous, are you kidding? Well, I didn't know if, you know, when we got to the bottom there, we could come around, or... You don't have any rope? You break your neck doing that, in this, in this, uh, this wind and cold and dark. Well, I suppose we no, can... No, 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 there's no coming back from that. Well, I suppose we can maybe pick some up in, in the inn. Or perhaps we won't even really need it if we're in the end. Let's hope so. I hope so, yes. I don't know about you, but they didn't, uh, they didn't necessarily leave with too many crowns when we uh, had to leave that place. So, uh, replacements aren't going to be uh, too easy. You make a good point, but uh, let's not worry too much about money right now. I mean, like, let's 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 cleave to the matter at hand and head head into town. Yeah, right, right. Yes. Uh, Onwards. Pardon nods. As you're 
kind of softly walking through the snow that's crunching beneath your boot falls. There is literally no light, no smell of chimney smoke, no bo dogs barking, no candles burning left on the windowsills. This place is devoid of life. Every building you come to has been abandoned. Mostly waddle and daub homes. Uh, uh, fellows, I, I is, don't know how. This is grim. Everyone seems to have left. Yes. Let's, let's make our way to what used to be the inn and maybe lay, the, lay down for the night. Maybe there's some. Wood. We can start a fire in the hearth. Hopefully they didn't take everything with them when they left, yes. Let's, let's get these animals, what, what we have left of the animals, get them in the stable, go from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You search in earnest for, um, for an inn or a stable, and you are you are you come back empty-handed. You kind of traffic between these six or seven buildings of varying size and it would support a number of families, some smaller, some larger. And there is no inn to be found. Those these are just like I said, waddle and dom homes are built into the earth. The only building that you really see that is sturdy enough to stand against the weather is this growing very cold at night. Is this stone building near the and in fact, you can see curls of smoke coming from it. Hmm. Well, there we go. Everyone's in the end for the night. Let's hope. Um, I'm, oh, I mean, doesn't look like any, and I'm used to. But uh... what? There's no stables near it, so are we sure it's an inn? Any port in a storm. I mean, look at this. Look at out here. I, I will freeze to death if we, if we stay out much longer. The atmosphere has descended so low in the sky, you can't even see Chateau Kelvin from here. In fact, seeing no, seeing further than just about 10 to 15 yards in front of you is difficult. The snow is falling at such an alarming rate. I suppose uh, backed into a bit of a corner here, fellows. Uh, why don't we go? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> she is clutching the blunderbuss a little bit tighter as every single place has not got a single fire going except for one building. Yeah, she's starting to get a little wary and she tries to keep an eye out. So you're all taking any sort of precautions? Uh, no. I'm gonna slip on my knuckle buster as we walk along. Knuckle buster. I got a knuckle buster here, and a <laughs> knuckle buster here. Yep. Knuckle dusty and knuckle buster. Work. <laughs> knuckle buster runs. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't wrap that fast or else I'd try to freestyle. <laughs> <All right. laughs> when I come through, hit you with my knuckle buster too. <laughs> you begin to approach this small stone building. And even here, <coughs> excuse me, there are no dog, dogs yipping, no birds in the trees nearby. In fact, there are no trees nearby whatsoever. The entire valley has been clear cut. You can see stumps of trees kind of sticking up out of the snow, dusted with snow and gray otherwise. This is about three inches of snow at best on the ground of powder. But the wind is, is, is tearing through this valley. It's pulling at your clothes as you're kind of coming toward the building, fighting against the wind. And it looks like a very small stone shrine. The shrine on the outside has this kind of rough-looking wooden painting of, uh, of the martyr. The martyr, of course, being a woman wearing a gown with a wreathed crown and holding a child with a skull face that represents both the cycle of life and death. 
the womb to the uh, from the womb to the earth. It says in ancient old that appears. You see the lowstone shrine, not very large at all, a single story at best. But you can smell wood smoke, like clearly, you can smell it in the air here. Who wants to be the first to uh, to go inside? I'll go. Oh. I'll go last. So she continues to listen and scan the, the outside. Okay. I'll call if you need help. I'll, I'll stay in the closet here. Oh, thank you for helping such a helpless woman as myself. Oh, uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> You've known Partha long enough at this point, Barnaby, to know that she is a sarcastic woman. <laughs> Or perhaps Bartles be as full of bravado and bluster. <laughs> I mean, his order alignment's heroism, so we're going with it. <laughs> yeah. I've got you! <laughs> Bartles B says, love your character already. <laughs> What's your order in castle alignment? Is that a curiosity elf? Romanticism and lechery. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> So what's going through your mind as you're approaching the uh, the uh, what's going through your mind as you approach the the shrine? Well, the shrine is a good sign. Um, if 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 they revere the martyr, then perhaps they'll they'll give us some good hospitality. Um, you know, the whole cabin, lakeside cabin in the snow seems very cozy and romantic. So hopefully, whoever the inhabitants are, are quite wel- welcoming. Crystal Lake was so cozy. That's right. <laughs> You're walking toward the shrine, and you can the, the smell of fire is very, very apparent in here. And you notice that you see wood smoke, not coming from a chimney, but you can see this kind of open this stone opening shaped like a cross, like above above the door. You couldn't see through; it's too high, but like such. And the the smoke's coming out that side and the other side as well. Very, very faint. Well, without a doubt, there's something that's there's something. There's probably a hearth inside that's burning. Okay, continue towards the door. The door will open with ease. Oh, I didn't open it. I was gonna knock. Oh, on it. okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> go ahead and knock. I give a knock. Hello. We've we've come upon this uh, your lovely cabin here and. Uh, it's quite cold out if you, if you would let us in. As Ulf is up toward the door, what are the two of you doing? Can you call it a cabin? <laughs> As I continue to watch the watch around and try and keep an ear out because it's dark. I believe he did. Um, Who has the torch? She did. Uh, Partha did. Yeah. yeah Partha. It's Partha's torch. So we'll assume you're kind of in fleeting shadows. You can see the Beyond the flickering of the torchlight, you can see Ulf's back as he calls out, but there's no answer at the door. Realizing that I'm holding a two-handed weapon and a torch. Yeah, like this. Yeah, I, I... I got it. I finally come to my senses and think, oh, and I, uh, <laughs> I hand the torch to him and... <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Of course. Of course, that, that. <clears throat> Me not to offer. I'm so out of sorts. Back to the shrine. There's no response. I, I turn back towards the others. It, they're not answer, They're not answering. It seems a little rude to walk in someone's home, but don't you know what sort of building this is? It's a, it's a shrine. Yeah. It's a shrine. It's a temple. We need sanctuary. Let's go. Very well then. Turns around and opens the door. Okay. The door gives a heavy thud as it begins to open. And inside you go. As you open the door, Ulf, you can see that inside there are a small number of pews, maybe three on either row, and they seem to terminate toward you can see this low stone dais. And surrounding the interior, it's literally in one chamber, you see these alcoves built into the stone. 
and in one of the alcoves is a fire, like a low burning campfire. Approach the campfire and warm my hands for a few moments. As you come in, you realize that the, the light of the fire is kind of playing off of the vaulted ceiling, and the sounds of the outside begin to kind of dip down because you're inside stone, of course. This will make brick that will whack against the storm. Are you all going into as well at this point? I let the others go in, and then I'll uh, hurry in if they do. Bartle will call out, Wolf! Uh, we sell it for Wolf? Uh, higher. But yes, come right in. Oh, uh, Partha, uh, after you. Or before you. I, I mean, uh, your choice before. Uh, uh, um, Right then! Bartlesby grabs the door, holds the torch up high, and walks out. Harden? Yeah? I'll get the door. Oh, uh, uh, With a solid thud, the shrine closes. You're all inside now. The fire is very warm and inviting. As you quickly go over to it, peel, peel your gloves off and begin to warm your hands. Uh, this is left. a place of safety. I start looking around to see if there are like any doors leading elsewhere within extra rooms more like maybe another door to the outside too just kind of assess the situation in the building the room, the chamber is maybe 10 feet on one side and 25 feet on the other it is one large chamber an old stone building that has been patched and kept up well no adjoining rooms whatsoever just a large chamber the ceiling is a little lower than you'd anticipate, but so would would be for most chapels built during the Second Age. You can see that there are engravings and reliefs within the stone that seem to depict a number of the gods of the covenant in varying situations. The one where uh, the fire is burning is not visible. The paint is flecked away. It's been so many years. Bartleby's going to extinguish the torch, try to save what's left of it. Okay. A half hour left on that torch. Hand it back to Parker. Unless you'd like me to. Uh, go ahead. I've got one last one. Does so, it appear that there's much uh, time left on this fire here? Much fuel left, I should say. It appears that the fire will, will burn for a little longer, probably maybe for the next five hours. Okay. But as you're warming your hands, you notice something. As you're looking toward the wall where the, where, the, where the painting once was, you can see something that is painted in ash. It seems unlike everything else you would find in here. A strange series of words. at the words for a while and ponders them and seem to they, they're letters but they don't seem to form words in any type that I am familiar with think about it a little bit longer think about all the books I've read and things that I've learned in the past and see if brings anything comes to mind and what that would mean you may make either a challenging education or a hard folklore okay alright so I will take education uh, I that's a 40% chance it's only him right now. Okay. And I rolled a 71 failure. Okay. You guys see this? Someone has written an ash upon the wall. No. Perhaps it's a warning. Perhaps nothing. I don't know what it means. I mean, holy places have things written all over them, right? Uh, oh, usually an ash. Dan. Dan. Noy. I'm not much for reading. Uh, uh, probably some prayer something? Uh, I'm trying to re see if I recognize it as well. Either of you may awesome. make either a. Challenging education or hard folklore, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna make folklore? Mm -hmm. 
trying to leave us a message you'd, uh, you'd think they'd leave it in common right right <laughs> that's uh maybe this wasn't for us could be but... i don't worry too much about it it's not like we know what it means anyway right right i think you're right and right. all of bartlesby bartlesby's bravado there is she or he doesn't seem to notice Right above his head, descending down from a thin gossamer web, is this small, tiny spider that glistens like a sapphire in the light as it lands upon his head, and he continues talking. I just you can swipe at it. Whoa! Over, over the top. Over All the top swipes of at your head, and you kind of. Oh! It got a spider! <laughs> <laughs> what ho! <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt you, you got a spider here. Oh, 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 oh it get, get it! <laughs> <laughs> get it <on. laughs> you can feel like the, you can feel the staticky web, like it like it sticks yeah, to your yeah. you can't get ah. it off. Because you took your gloves off to dry off in here, obviously. <laughs> get it! Get it! <laughs> Ulf manages to swipe it off, and you see this little tiny spider about the size of a thimble, or, sorry, a thumbtack, scurry across the ground. I hate those things. Stomp on it. Crush. <laughs> a soft cracking sound. Ah, but there's one, there's more. It's just looking around. <laughs> As you look around the chamber, you, you, see, you can see where it certainly spun its web and has caught some smaller insects, but you don't see any other spiders. Gods, it's been in here a while. You don't think the message was to warn about that, do you? It could be. I've never seen. I've never seen one sparkle like that. It's far. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it when it was coming down. Uh, it sparkled like a sapphire. All I can see right now is uh, uh, that. Points of the Wolf squish lifts. on the ground. Wolf lifts, lifts up his right leg and peers at the bottom of his boot. Blood, guts, this dead spider. How big are we? Done? Like, thumbtack sized. Oh, it's a tiny, tiny spider. Tiny abdomen. Well, uh, maybe, maybe it might not be the best or the worst idea for us to, since that one, listen, you said, right? Uh, take some fire and, uh, around a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, what, what gets me is that. Uh, it was still active when it was this cold. I don't normally see spiders in winter. Well, I mean, there's a fire, maybe. Maybe the warmth uh, it's it's, woke it. It's right? inside, I mean. Perhaps. It is kind of strange. I mean, insects aren't even around this time of year. The spider's not an insect. It's an arachnid. Hardy corrects you. No, well, I'm not a, I'm not a I'm not, I'm not a believer in all of those name objectifications. Come My on. father was a natural philosopher. Uh, spiders of philosophy. Well, that's a new one. <laughs> uh, uh, well, back to me not getting bit by insects. Uh, yes, arachnids. yes. Uh, hand, hand me that torch again. Yeah. I, I take the torch. torch. You know, come toward the, where the ceilings are vaulted. Yeah, you can't I'll, quite reach them I'll, with I'll, your single arm and a torch. I'll try to burn away as many cobwebs as I can. You can see where the cobwebs start, and then as you begin to kind of as you kind of burn the ones there, they kind of dribble like shh, shh, shh. And you can see as you bring the torch up a little higher, there are other spiders up here too. And within the light of the torch, they seem to glimmer with like sapphires as, the, as they quickly scurry away. See, see Bartles, we take a look small, over here. There's, small there's, clutches. there's some more of them. Oh. Uh, of various well, sizes. The son of philosophy, can you, uh, Point me out what what those might be then. Spiders, he says. Arachnids. But, like uh, I said. Kind of. Maybe uh, the 
the, 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 the ones with the, uh, the bite. Blue oh, spider's bite. The, the bad bite. I don't know, but I look like a natural philosopher. <laughs> that was your father. I thought he might have passed his profession down. No? Yeah, he told me that spiders aren't insects, they're arachnids. Seems like that might not have been the best education as a child, but I'm glad you had well, it. Well, hell, you didn't know. <laughs> well, are the, have it any served of... us well, sir. And <laughs> sapphires come in a lot of colors. What colors? What color? Purplish blue. blue. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think if I've ever heard of or seen a purplish blue spider. Make a secret folklore test. Okay. Secret folklore. I would normally have a chance of 40. And a 78 probably doesn't do it. <laughs> <coughs> You're not entirely sure. Nothing comes to mind. Can't say I have a cold. Winter spider? <laughs> well, well. Or purple. Or, pu or blue. I don't know nothing about my spiders. Just, well, I mean, is that the kind of thing that's going to keep you up at night? No. Oh, I mean, depends on uh, depends on what happens if they bite you. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we need to know so that we might know. keep you down at night. <laughs> but well, you know, you might die. Spider bites are going to kill you. He Harding kind of says, yes. laughing. Well, but, if he's willing to do more than one more. Oh. <laughs> don't 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 what, you worry. I've, what I've, for you? I've I've brought some anti venom. If anything goes south, you know we'll oh. have something to fall back oh, on. Well, that you know, I I I'll keep the watch. I'll, I'll keep it. Uh, if if uh, not not the whole night, you understand. Yeah, we'll I, we'll, I take, we'll take equal up watches. Uh, yes. To be, to be fair, if that door opens, we're all gonna wake up, right? Uh, if so, I would assume so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to keep a watch? Well, in my opinion, it seems like it would just be the safest way to do this, but... Whatever you say, Barrels B. Of course. I, I, uh, yes. Yes. So we're staying here for the night? Well, do you see a better option? No, maybe the chateau's warmer, but we'd have to get there. Well, it we've lost all of our food away. things just from trying to walk in the dark already. Maybe, maybe best we, uh, we wait and then search. Uh, maybe some things have been left behind. Seems to me the best course of action. But what do I know? I'm not a planner. I hit things. I say we, 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 lay, we lie down and get some rest. Right. Unfortunately, a supper of, of, a, of an early bedtime, but uh, wouldn't be the first time I've had that. Right. Sun comes up early, it's winter. We go to the chateau then. Yes, yes. So, right then. Uh, All right. Feel well, free. I'm going to sleep on this pew right here. Of course, of course. Feel free, uh, I will keep the for a little bit, and then I'm going to wake someone up. Who should I wake up? Who Who is who's next? I'll take second. So we pick third. All right. All right. I'll take it then, I suppose. With that look. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. The night is long. And having nothing to eat that evening, you wake up the next morning with a pretty sour stomach. You can see light coming from the east, and you know it's the east, because you, you inherently know it's the east, and light's literally coming through that cross-like window above the door, way above the door. And it's blinding as it comes through, and you can see the dust kind of filtering through it. The snows have let up. It's broad daylight outside. I kind of take a quick moment to like look my skin over. I'm kind of worried I got bit in the, in the eye. You could have searched your 
arms and legs and neck. No spider bites at all. Okay. None whatsoever. Thanks. So, uh, should we, uh, should we rummage a bit in the village, see if there's anything, or just head straight to the chateau? Let's head straight to the chateau. I'm hungry. Alright. I said I'm not much of a plan to point me at something to punch about this, but, uh, I'll follow your lead. Very well. Anything else we need left we need to do before we leave here? <sighs> Pardon me while I take my morning piss. He goes out behind the, the shrine. He does so. You come to the doors of the shrine. And they are, of course, fastened shut, as would not be surprising. As you uh, had intended to keep them closed for interlopers, they wouldn't come in. And you open the door. In a blinding light pours inside of the chateau, of, sorry, of the, of the shrine, and you are blinded temporarily, and your eyesight slowly comes back as you realize that something is terribly amiss. If you recall, you left the mules outside. You didn't hitch them to the post. But greeting you upon three tall stakes are the severed heads of your mules affixed upon these tall posts and the posts themselves are riddled with black arrows down at like some spine of some terrifying creature as your eyes can all lock in and you all need to now make a challenging resolve test As you're ready to pull down your trousers and head outside, all you stagger back. Those who failed. By the way, you restored to imperiled. All of you are restored to imperiled. You suffer uh, 11 mental peril from stress and gain 6 corruption. Hmm. Oh! That's not how we left those. Screams. Oh, it was uh, quite, quite quiet. Yes. I was quiet on um, my watch. No thudding of arrows. The arrows kind of riddle the sides of the stakes, almost like a ri- like a rib cage of the animal as its head has been cleanly severed, half frozen on top of the stake. Is there any uh, footprints or anything through the snow? The are you animal? Oh, yes. There's footprints all over the snow. All around where the mules were. General vicinity they headed or came from? Well, you all are kind of walking outside right now, and it's blinding light, so it'll be a hard survival test. <laughs> I have a 20. I'd like to... Um... Yeah, 92 on that. Someone's been here. No shit, Marlesby, Hartman says. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have something more useful than your philosophy? Yeah, get your fucking sword out. Somebody's trying to kill us. I don't use a sword. Are they really trying to kill us? Well, if they've got bows, they'll shoot you before you can close the distance. Well, then the sword won't help. Hartlesby is going to pull out this half-broken sword from a, from a sheath at the side. He's gonna grab his bola, his bolas in one hand, just in case. And Are they that. really trying to kill us? They, they certainly had to jump on us enough to kill these mules, right? Well, they were quiet enough. They were quiet enough. Look over here, Martin they says. They didn't walk in. They killed the mules over here, he says. They're trying to scare us. 
everybody heads towards wherever here. Yeah. You're kind of bl shading your eyes from the blinding light from the east. Yeah. As you kind of do as such, you can see these nearby tree stumps where they had set the mules to slaughter, without a doubt. They just took an axe to each of their bodies. Yeah, they took a okay. woodsman's axe. Mm -hmm. Just split the horse and split the mule's head off clean. Well, you can see three of the hor the core of the mules lying in the around, kind of arranged around the the stump. Almost like three spokes. Almost as if they were in movement, lying on the side with their legs out like such. They seem like they arranged the bodies in some kind of pattern. Oh yes. Mm. Good. This doesn't seem like the work of castle guards. No. no. You see, sp you see spiders crawling up Barrel's big leg. Snow. There's those spiders again. No. On your no. leg. God. Oh, down. Gods. Nope. You quickly brush nope. it aside, and you realize that in the light that. It's not just the glistening of the snow, almost half a foot of snow fell last night, but you can see these gossamer webs, thin webs, kind of cast between the mules toward the stump, and there are these small purple spiders crawling everywhere, like a blanket of them. God, these things that infest everything. Stomping around, trying to clear them off of themselves completely. Okay, well... Let's. This is strange. Let's leave. And let's go to the chateau. Maybe there are. What, what country are we in? Do I know? A black arrow strikes a nearby building. Oh. Look at the direction the arrow came from. The light is blinding. You can't see anything that direction. Nothing at all. Try to duck behind cover. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly arrows start <laughs> striking the buildings next to you. As you leap down into the snow and you realize that there's just a tree stump here and there. There's no place to take cover unless you go back inside the shrine, wander into the village, or perhaps to the west where you can see the winding road lead toward Chateau Plain. Break for the chateau. Sprinting. A oh. dead sprint? Yeah. Alright. Harder to hit. Uh you gonna want to accompany him? Partha's gonna head in that direction, but she's not gonna she's not gonna wear herself out like that. Yeah. So you're not going to run toward it, you're in the, you're not you're gonna jog toward it? Yes yeah. to be clear? Yeah. Okay. And what about yourself, Bartlesby? Uh, A saunter? Middle ground between them. I have to, just in case, I might have to dive in front of something. Okay. And with that, you begin to run. Some of you, at least, are running for your lives. We should say some of you are. Defensively run, isn't it? <laughs> Suddenly you see that Ulf bursts forward at great speed, putting distance between the two of you. Arrows kind of following in your wake. One almost just within inches of striking It's a nearby building, Bartlesby. You all need to escape. You have three rounds to get out of here. Ulf is already ahead of you. You can't even see me so far ahead. Ulf, you get a head start. The others do not. Ulf, I need you to start. Roll 1d10, add 3 in your movement. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. Bartlesby, roll 1d10 and add your movement. Seven, fifteen. Okay. And then finally, Partha. Partha gets an eleven. Okay. Let's see what happens. 
fortune points. Are we doing that as a pool? Oh, yes. Okay. Just making sure. Plus six, seven, 14. Bartlesby, you begin running as quickly as you can, going as fast as you can away from everyone else. Something draws near. You quickly turn your head around to see what it is, kind of staggering in the snow as you come to the foot of this winding road leading up to the gatehouse of the chateau. An arrow sings through the air. Flip. Ah! You're hit right in the side, caught unawares. As you suffer nine damage. Who, Ulf, yes. Okay. Partha, you come turning around a building as the arrow <laughs> strikes one of the nearby, strikes one of the nearby pieces of wood. You quickly twist around and you lose sight of Bartlesby as Bartlesby, Bartlesby is somewhere ahead of you. You can see him break it, a dead sprint across the field, a completely open field toward the foot of this twisting road that rises toward the uh, toward a gatehouse. An arrow sings out. 46, it strikes the snow, kind of losing it into kind of around you. All right, Ulf, once again, roll 1d10 and add your movement. Ulf, roll 1d10 and add your oh, movement. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nice. Um, 11. Okay, Bartlesby. And then finally, Partha. Partha. Uh, 15. 15. Oh, if you actually add 3, because you did that spread to your 14. So 6 plus. Okay. <laughs> you begin running up the side of this hill as you're coming up out of the, you're down out of the valley. You're away from all of the. Uh, the bill of the village, and you're kind of heading up the side of this westernly embankment through the snow, trudging as fast as you can. At the very top of the crescent of the hill, you can see a pair of stone towers adjoined by a wooden bridge. It's the gatehouse to Chateau Kilden. This is your final time you must attempt to escape. Ulf, roll 1d10, add 3 in the Four. Total? Mm -hmm. Four. Okay. Um, oh, four, four, oh, uh, that's, okay. uh, oh. 11. Okay. Bartlesby? 11. Okay. Partha? 10. Ugh. 6. Plus. Ulf! <laughs> You're making your way up the hill. It's very strenuous to get up this hill. It's very, very tall. And you hear this sound from behind you, this breaking coming from somewhere as you're turning downward back toward the light, toward an eastern eastern lane. You can't see who's out there, but then you see this black arrow kind of come toward you through the air. Critical success. Mm. <laughs> ah! You feel the sting of the arrow. Suffer 16 damage. Oof. Okay. Seriously wounded. Roll 1d6. Five. Okay. No injury. Bartles B. As you see, all oh, stagger as you're really climbing as quickly as you possibly can on foot up this hill, looking back toward the east where you can't see anything as you're blinded by the bright light of morning. Arrow comes toward you. 46 is a hit. Bartles B. You suffer nine damage. <laughs> Moderate. Roll 1d6. <laughs> Six. Oh no! Bartles B suffered an injury! Oh, Bartles B. <laughs> Bartles B. Bartles Come and hit me! Leave the others! <laughs> you hear a wincing. Bartlesby immediately gains six corruption. 
<laughs> we will determine what injury you have suffered now. Roll percentiles. Actually, Grim Resolve. It allows you to ignore damage. And any injuries you may have suffered. Okay, so spend a fortune point. <laughs> uh, where are we? I'll take it. Urgh, she grits her teeth, or he grits her his teeth, <laughs> and powers through it, <laughs> calling upon his stores of fortune as you use Grim Resolve to ignore damage and injury. Try so, harder! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then finally rips the arrow out <laughs> you throw it in your wing <laughs> Partha from where you're at yep. 16 <laughs> you were hit by an arrow the final stretch of your escape as you suffer 7 damage okay. I am uh, lightly wounded okay. <laughs> I figure I probably shouldn't you mm. quickly come to <laughs> you come to the exterior of the gatehouse. There's no time. You know they're still in pursuit behind you. They must be. As you turn back down toward this twisting road, it's nothing but bright, blinding light. Before you is two tall stone towers that rise again, 30 feet above, adjoined by a wooden bridge. And from there, this dogged-looking portcullis clink that has been dropped almost all the way to the ground, save for about a foot or so beneath of it, where you can potentially squeeze through. Not between the bars, mind you, but beneath the spines of the portcullis are situated every six inches or so between you and the ground. <laughs> Scrack! You hear an arrow snap as it strikes a nearby stone. Another one falls short <laughs> into a nearby snowbank. Well, if you're not going, it's going to be ladies first. I'm going to... <laughs> strikes, the, uh, strikes the top of the wooden tower, making a whistling sound that bounces off of a nearby rock ricochet. And <laughs> Wolf drops down to the ground and starts squeezing through the, the, uh, the gap. What is your build? Normal. Normal. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a routine coordination test. It's a fail okay. forward test. Routine. Five percent chance to succeed. Actually, um, forty-five since I have a bar for one, but that's a success. With okay. Thirty. You squeeze through without without harm. Bartlesby, you're next. He's gonna try, but I don't think it's gonna work. What's your What's your body type? Husky. Husky. That is gonna be challenging for you. Fail forward. Challenging. Uh, what was that again? Challenging coordination. coordination. Okay, so I have 55, so 45. Kind of crawling beneath, trying to get underneath of it. 40. Nice! It takes about a few moments <laughs> until she comes either, he comes to the other side and stands up and extends an arm out to pull Ulf underneath. Ulf, what is your body type? Of. Sorry, part of them, my right. apologies. I, I knew part of that. Um, your body <laughs> type is the same, it's husky. Okay, it's challenging coordination test. Bail forward. Okay. Come on. Challenging coordination shall be 35. And we got an 80. That's a failure. Oh! You can feel the spines digging into the into your back of the portcullis. These huge like spikes that would drive down into the stone where you can see the hole where they drop into a hole about nine foot deep. You will suffer six physical peril. Whew. I'm still at uh, ignore one skill rank. And you all make it to the other side of the gate, and you hear this boom, crack, snap, pop, pop. All these arrows kind of strike in the nearby stone. As you look back toward the light and can't see anything through the portcullis, it's so incredibly blinding and bright. But in here, in the chateau grounds, you can see everything. Is Harden with us? No. 